It's Leinster final weekend and uh, Dublin are obviously going to beat Mead in this match and you just hope that Mead can keep it kicked out to them but it brings to mind the question once again of splitting Dublin 1 and 2 and actually not necessarily just to jump on that hobby horse but more the point of what would Dublin split in 2 look like and just looking at the teams when you split them up north side and south side it's going to be Dublin south uh, sorry, Dublin North winning the All Ireland handily because their team is absolutely outrageous. Just even look at the goalkeeper Stephen Cluxton, who goes down as the the goal. Johnny Cooper, Philly McMahon, and Owen Merchant. That's a that's an All Ireland winning full back line. You'd imagine maybe a small bit of a height issue there, but it hasn't cost them. Especially when you look at the half back line you're going to have here, which would be John Small, Jack McCaffrey, and Brian Fenton. Sorry, John Small, Jack McCaffrey, and Eric Lowndes with Brian Fenton and James McCarthy in front of them, so that's absolutely absurd. Half forward line of Cormac Costello, Brian Howard and Kieran Kilkenny. So yeah, the idea of splitting Dublin in two all of a sudden isn't looking so good, especially with Bernard Brogan, Paddy Andrews and Dean Rock as the full forward line. So split Dublin in two all you want, but uh, Dublin North would still be winning that All-Ireland. And yet they have a half-decent bench as well. Darren Daly, who's often used by Jim uh, Gavin. Paddy Small is John Small's brother, excellent forward for Ballymun. Sean Bogler, Evan Comerford, the goalkeeper as well. And Connor, Connor McHugh from Nafina. Dublin South then, well the first four goalkeepers that Dublin would, would be looking to pick from, they're all from the north side. So Lorcan Malloy is probably the next one from St Anne's, uh, he's no longer on the panel. Full back line then, uh, Michael Fitzsimons, uh, Rory O'Carroll and Dave, Davey Byrne, pretty good full back line. Uh, Robbie McDade, Keen O'Sullivan and uh, Padre Kofik Byrne who's on the panel um, he's normally a midfielder maybe he can play full back as well but I've shoved him in uh, wing back there because uh, he's about 6'6 six six. Um, probably not as good at a defence we'd have to say with the Dublin South or certainly not uh, the same proven pedigree over the years midfield then Michael Darren McCauley and Darren Gavin Darren Gavin's been pulling up trees this year half forward line is very impressive this is where it starts to get a little tasty Niall Scully, Kevin McManaman and Conor Callahan. You do well to keep them out. Uh, with Paul Mannion, Owen O'Gara and Colin Baskell as the full forward line. So not bad at all. Andrew McGowan is on the panel this year to kill McCudd man. And uh, he could be one that could be brought in as well. Um, I think I got everyone covered there. If there's any names I'm missing out, let me know and it might level it up a bit. But it seems to me like Dublin South uh, would uh, not keep it into Dublin North. And Dublin North would be winning that All-Ireland. Hard to see who would actually beat that Dublin North team. Um, a rest of Ireland team to beat Dublin actually if you had the full strength Dublin team what pick of the rest of Ireland would actually beat them because I tried to do it for Leinster before there is no way a combined Leinster team would beat Dublin as far as I can see it but if you were to put in a combined rest of Ireland team what would it look like um, I'd be happy to hear yours as well in goals I've gone through Graham Brody. you could of course look at the likes of um, Niall Morgan David Clark uh, well I suppose he's behind Rob Henley at the moment uh, Rory Began is obviously a, a one that you'd look at as well, having won an All Star. Um, full back line then: Owen Vaughan Gallagher from Donegal got that pace. Ronan McNamee because he's a specialist full back, and he's got a real dog in him, and you need someone who's going to get stuck in. Uh, Killian Clark as well. He's not uh, he's not shy either. The Cavan man. A couple of other options I could have looked at there were Drew Wiley, Park Hamsey, uh, even though he didn't have a good game against Donegal. Um, Owen Cairn because he's a little. Ferret as well in there. Um, Sean Andy O'Kellig, Liam Silk and uh, Donald Keoghan as well. The halfback line then, a couple of flyers in here, actually three flyers. Ryan McHugh, uh, Lee Keegan and Carl O'Connell. Uh, hard to beat those, I think. If you wanted someone a bit more physical, maybe Jack Sherwood. Uh, Kieran Malloy from Galway as well. It's basically Lee Keegan with a ponytail. Uh, Tiernan McCann, although the old Donegal day might rule him out a little bit. Uh, Paddy Durkin and uh, I d just haven't seen enough of Gavin White yet to, to know at this level but maybe he will prove to be good enough midfield then uh, Matty Donnelly and I went with Jarlett O'Burns just because I really like the cut of his jib and could see him being a fantastic player for years to come but I'd understand if you went for Kevin Feely or Gerard McKiernan maybe even Quaylon Mooney or Brendan Murphy uh, half forward line uh, Sean O'Shea, Michael Murphy, Dermot O'Connor you do very well to, to keep them out. Um, the other options maybe Carl Craig has just been so impressive lately and his pace, the way he drives at teams as well. It's a bit different to what the other guys that I've named would give you. 
Fergal Conway, Kildare, really good player. Owen Cleary of Clare and uh, Peter Hart. Of course, you put Peter Hart anywhere. Uh, full forward line then. Uh, Conor McManus. I, I'd struggle to think of anyone who's a bit more of a sharpshooter than him. Uh, Michael Quinlevin. He's a ball winner. You can put the ball on him any which way. And he can, if he's fully fit, he's going to do damage. And David Clifford as well. So, other options. Daniel Flynn would 100% be in here, but he's not lining out for Clare or for Kildare this year. Um, so, you could make a very strong case to put him in there. Damien Comer, of course. I thought about him, um, maybe himself and Quinlevin, but I just thought Quinlevin can do everything and both feet. So can Comer, so flip of a coin. Paddy McBrearty, Connor Cox, uh, Jamie Clark, Heslin, Hurley, Adam Tyrrell's a good corner four from Kildare. Ian Burke, Connor Sweeney, Paul Ganey, and Jamie Brennan as well, who I think has been brilliant for Donegal this year. Um, look at the Munster final this weekend between Cork and Kerry. Cork haven't beaten Kerry in the Championship since 2012. Uh, they've met 29 times this millennium. 18 Kerry wins, 5 uh, Cork wins only, and 6 draws as well. It's a huge incentive to win it because the winner goes into the Super 8s with the Ulster team as well. And whether that's um, Cavan or whether it's Donegal you would fancy yourself to, to be competitive at the very least because the last thing you want to do is end up in Dublin's group and have a fair chance of being guaranteed one defeat out of three which I think a lot of teams would uh, you know, would be in that situation uh, speaking of Dublin, Cork apparently beat them in a challenge match recently the fact that Cork hammered Limerick rather than the last few years where they've been labouring past Tipperary or labouring past different teams that would give you some sort of hope for Cork, especially with Kerry being beaten twice by Mayo in the league and league final. Yeah, just not that impressive on the biggest stage. Labour and pass Clare as well. Watch that game. It was hard to even get through it. It was quite quite a boring game. The turning point for Cork had to be that 2015 Monster final down in um, Fitzgerald Stadium. I was down at it. They had the game won. And then uh, at the very end of the game, Fionn Fitzgerald just puts a swinger at, at a shot. I think he was even trying to loft it into the area. Ends up over the bar and Clare go on or kill Kerry go on to win the replay and the the bottom has just fallen out of Cork ever since. But um I don't know. It's just hard to imagine that Cork can somehow turn it around from getting hammered last year to winning this game this year. But maybe they'll give a good performance and it's just Kerry just don't seem to be flying at the moment. And James O'Donoghue isn't out as well and he normally he is out and he normally fills his boots against Cork. Um the Ulster final then, Cavan against Donegal in Clonus on Sunday. Um, Colm O'Rourke spoke about, um, well he was responding to Joe Brawley and spoke about uh, Michael Murphy's leadership and said maybe he's not the greatest player of the last decade and maybe in some games he hasn't delivered. And The 2012 All-Ireland when he scored the goal against Mayo just set the tone for the day. That will always be the first thing that comes up. But uh, I just thought, it's, is it worth looking into what Colin O'Rourke is talking about here when he says that he doesn't deliver on every big day? Now, we all know he's brilliant, but there is a bit of a nauseating deification of certain big players that it's just an accepted reality that this player is great and you can never question it. And if you do, therefore you hate him or have something against him. But anyway, uh, this is just unobject or just facts. In the seven Ulster finals that Murphy has played in, he has scored four points from play. So make that of what you will. They've won four to seven, so maybe that counters that completely. And including freeze and a penalty, he scored one thirteen, and that penalty was won by himself as well. The flip side is, if Donegal win this um, Ulster title, it will be their 10th ever, and Murphy will have lifted the cup five of those times. So that's an outrageous record. So what do you look at? The fact that he's going to possibly lead them to a fifth title, or that he has four points from play from seven final so far so let me know what you think the history between um the history of cabin is very interesting the fact that they've won 40 or 39 ulster titles but they won 29 of those between 1915 and 1955 and since donegal won their first like they've won nine cabin have won just one in that time so it's a ridiculously poor record for the perceived aristocrats um trying to think of reasons that cabin could win this game they played Division 1 this season, Donegal played Division 2, albeit Cavan went down. Um, they're higher scoring per game, so in the games against Monaghan and Armagh twice, they've averaged 19 points per game, uh, whereas Donegal, playing against Fermanagh and Tyrone, averaged 17. So you could, you could make a, an argument there that Cavan have possibly had stronger opposition, maybe not. 
and who from the Cavan team would make the Donegal team and I thought maybe Raymond Galligan and goals might Killian Clark, Niall Murray, Martin Riley, Darren McVitie and Grove McKiernan maybe Keane Mackey who's come on to do so well would be a, an impact sub in that situation too so that's like six and seven players that you could look at and that kind of should make it a very very close game people are talking about maybe being high scoring I'm not sure about that um, the reason for Donegal to win is just the manner that they dismissed Tyrone during that um, Ulster semi-final six of the All-Ireland 2012 team are still involved all the Max, uh, Paddy McGrath in, or Neil McGee Leo McLoone Paddy McBrearty Frank McGlynn came on and then Michael Murphy obviously as well Jamie Brennan is the player that just keeps on impressing me just savage pace like he has an eye for goal and the fact that you have Murphy and McBrearty as well like they guaranteed have more more threat up front as well but Tyrone seem to push up far more than they normally do go one on one in a lot of situations and which gave space I remember one time Murphy picked the ball up on the 45 on the left flank and he was able to just solo across one on one um, player not really on top of him and just lash it over from probably 35 yards out and I thought he normally never gets that space and I don't think he will against Cavan um, Donegal have won four of the last five championship meetings against Cavan and that stuff sometimes does matter so I would be looking at uh, Donegal to squeak through um, in the qualifiers there's plenty of games going on this weekend but Tyrone are going to, to Longford to Pierce's Park and uh, people keep talking about this uh, qualifier record that Longford have and have had but um, and especially the Monaghan game in 2016 when they knocked them out was such a surprise albeit Monaghan just a six day turnaround from losing in Ulster that time Tyrone are going to spank Longford in this game and the reason being is that they just have more players suited to putting a team like Longford to the sword than Monaghan do I think Monaghan have a lot of players that are unbelievable competitors that allow them to punch above their weight but do they have the same wealth of free scorers as, as Tyrone have I wouldn't think so and if you look at that Longford team from 2016 that beat Monaghan, I was just going through the team to see who's still on the panel and they're definitely a team and many of these middle to lower ranked teams in terms of where they are and the league table rankings, they hemorrhage players. So looking at the Longford team, Paddy Cullum is still involved from 2016, the goalkeeper, Donald McElligot, Mickey Quinn and James McGivney and maybe Barry McEwen as well but he came off injured the last day. So that's that's five players that might be involved and uh, I just can't see how this team would be able to keep it kicked out to Tyrone over the course of the game and I would say the handicap would be covered there uh, Niall Morgan did an interview um, trying to you know basically the way Cork Kerry people treat, keep trying to build up Cork's challenge but he was uh, he was kind of building up Longford by saying I was talking to a friend of mine from Kildare and he was telling me how difficult it was for him at Pierce Park in the Leinster Championship when they got a draw after extra time he said the pitch is tight and when Longford played well the home support really got behind him so it's a game, dangerous game for us. Yeah so Longford did play um, Kildare and it went to a replay. Both games were in Tullamore so I'm not really sure what he's talking about Pierce Park and the home crowd but there you go. Uh, Tyrone to win that one handy as far as I'm concerned. Dunny, uh, down against Mayo as well. Uh, the interesting talking point here has to be the goalkeeper for Mayo um, because David Clark. There was rumours that he had walked off the panel because he hasn't been playing and that he'd registered for a soccer team. None of that seems to be true. I think he's still involved. Um, Rob Henley had, like it was, he just wasn't his best display at all against um, against Ross Common. And in a couple of big games over the years, it hasn't gone right for him. So the question mark is always there. And I would imagine David Clark, who he's an All Star winner, he's had some very very good days. Rarely has he has he had any shockers. I would, I would imagine that this, this game and James Horan's selection of who's in goals will tell a fair tale over who will still be involved in the panel later in the summer because David Clark is 35. He probably has another couple of years in him. If, if Stephen Cluxton has, there's no reason that other goalkeepers can't. Uh, Henley is 29. But if, if Clark doesn't get the start here, especially after Henley's mistakes the last day, when is he going to get a chance again? So I'd imagine he'd walk. Uh, whereas if Rob Henley gets dropped for this I'm not sure if he can take another dropping and uh, like where would his confidence be then so I think James Horan is basically I think there's a fair chance he's going to lose one of his goalkeepers after this game uh, Matt Rowan he was one of the revelations of the league and broken collarbone is, um, is a huge blow especially when Tom Parsons and Shamie O'Shea they're still rehabbing we're not sure when we'll see Parsons um, so Stephen Cohen might come in as a midfield option Tony Vaughan uh, 
Jared O'Connor in with Aidan O'Shea maybe and looking at the 2016 under 21 All-Ireland team I was kind of thinking have enough of these players come through but they've actually had a decent return there with Mayo like Ono Donoghue who's played plenty of games Stephen Cohen Matt Ruan Fergal Boland was midfield the last day Connor Loftus we've seen a bit Jim O'Connor and Michael Plunkett started the last day as well so it's actually not a bad return from a 2016 team although it's, it's hard to say if too many of those have grabbed the team by the scruff of the neck maybe Jim O'Connor being the exception uh, Quayle Mooney is back for suspension for down and uh, Paddy Talley the manager did help go away to, to victory over Mayo before him so maybe that can't be discounted um, just about think Mayo will come through there but as always they'll make it an absolute nightmare for themselves Monaghan against Clonus, uh, both teams knocked out of um, out of Ulster by uh, Cavan, in fact. Um, Malachy Rourke and Kieran McGinney, I think they're both kind of playing for their jobs in a way because it's seventh season for Malachy O'Rourke, he just signed on for one more season. And uh, Kieran McGinney, he's, um, he's in his fifth season as well. So two of the longest serving managers and... I think they need to get a big win at this stage. Jamie Clark has just signed for Nathan Gales in uh, in London, so he's going to be moving over there. And he is very talented forward, as is the likes of Reno O'Neill. Stephen Campbell, I really thought he'd be uh, one of the top footballers in Ireland at this stage. Obviously, he's in now the team as well. Um, so like that was that's a fairly brutal qualifier in Clonus as well. Just about edge for Monaghan there. Uh, Kildare to win an Antrim, you'd imagine. Derry to just hold out Leash. Westmead will cover the handicap with Limerick. Uh, Clare, I think they're minus three, or they were when I last checked, uh, away to Leitrim. I'd imagine they'll fill their boots there. And uh, Offaly and Sligo, just about go at Sligo, but uh, neither team would feel, feel you with confidence with the results they've had this year.